Okay, in this video, we are going to see about the HTML HTTP request object. What do you mean by that? Already we have seen in the previous video that uh, it is an object which is used for asynchronous communication between the client and server. It performs the following operation, sends data from the client in the background, receives the data processed from the server and updates a web page without reloading it. That is what more important, without reloading it. Okay, what are all the methods in this object? As it is an object, the methods available in this XML HTTP request which helps to send and receive the data are first void open, then method URL. Whether we are using get method or post method, then the URL from, from which, uh, where it has to, the data has to be sent. Then open method URL asynchronous. Here, if it is, whether it is an asynchronous data transfer or not, that's what given here. Then the same open method has three versions. Okay, only method and URL. This, this is the mandatory one. Then open method URL asynchronous, use the name and password you can give. Then another one is send. Once it is opened for asynchronous transfer or open for transfer of data, the, once the method URL are given, then you have to send the data to the server set. So that can be done by this uh, two versions of the send method. Send and this is for uh, without any uh, parameters for get if it is uh, with a get method, it is processed. Then if it is with a post method, then you can use this, uh, this type of query. Uh, sorry, this method. Then set request header. This adds request headers. Now we'll see properties of that. Just now we have seen method. Now we'll see properties of XML HTTP request object based on that we can take some decisions. So on ready state chain. So if we check the status, it is called whenever ready state attribute changes, it must not be used with synchronous request. It is only with the asynchronous request. So another property is ready state. It has the four values, sorry, five values ranging from zero to four. So if it is zero, unopened. So open is not called, that is a status. One means opened, open is called, but send is not called, just open. So far send request is not sent. Send method is not called. Then headers received, two means. It is called and headers and status are available. Loading, still downloading the data. That's what the meaning. Then four, everything is over, done. The operation is completely successful, fully. Then response text, what is the response uh, of this operation? That will be stored in this response XML. It will be stored as an XML. Now the meaning of the status code, just now we have seen another uh, Ready state, then one more property is also there. That's what the status code. We can check with the status code also. So if it is 200, then completely over. The successful, the operation is successful. The, what we have, that is, we have the request is sent to the server and the server uh, processes the data and it is being received by the client successfully. So that can be checked with the status code if it is equal to 200. Or else the others, the meaning of the other codes are 201 is created, 204, no content is received, 205, reset content, 206, partial content, then 400 is bad request, 401 is unauthorized, 403 is forbidden, 404, not found, all these things you should have seen, if page not found, object not found, all those things you should have seen. For that, these are all the status code. Then 405 method not allowed, not acceptable. 401 proxy authentication required. Then 408 request timeout. 411 length required. 413 requested entity too large. Then 414 requested entity too large. Okay. Uh, 415 unsupported media type. 500 internal server error. 501 not implemented. Bad gateway service unavailable. Gateway time mode, HTTP. So all these error code you can catch. So first we will see how to create an XML HTTP request. Just like how you create the other uh, instance of an object in the class. Uh, here also we use new method. So there are uh, two way you can use a new method uh, based on the browser. Okay, if the for other browsers, 
depending upon whether it is an internet explorer if it is an internet explorer we have to use activex object for others you just create an object so in javascript create an xml http request object and store it in a variable named this here yeah, this is also user defined variable since uh, we, we would like to have the same name so that it will be easy here uh, we have used the same name so here actually this is a user defined variable only so we can give anything but for meaningful we have given the same name like html request object first initially we set to false so that if it is not first time definitely it will not be created so based on this we will create if we check this variable and if it is false we create a new object for that initialize we have, we have initialized this to false so now first it is false then if window dot xml http request we check uh, if it is other than the uh, internet explorer then this will be done that is xml http request object equal to new here we have declare and make it as false then here what we do if it is if window or html http request is uh, if if it is set then what we do is that is if it is a uh, for a browsers other than uh, ie that is internet explorer then we create by using this new xml http actually this is a object and this is a variable name so now this is an instance of this object so now it's clear other than internet explorer can be checked with this if others then the object can be created using new now if it is for ie that is internet explorer so it can be created using an activex object only so how to create an using activex object by using letters see here we check this is mainly for other browsers else if window dot activex object so we check whether it is an ie explorer so by using this we can check whether it is an ie explorer then what we have to do is xml has to be request we use the same name equal to new activex object then within bracket you have to give microsoft dot xml http you have to give the exact spelling uh, both in lower and upper case has to be given like this or else you will get error so you have to give it like this only then the object will be created for the if it is an ie explorer so let us consider an example where two numbers are added for that a html file is created with the two text boxes where the user enters the numerical data when the user clicks the submit button with a caption submit from the html page a function load doc gets executed now see this is a uh, coding which gets the data for that so for example we have given the id okay then name ab so in this name it will be stored. now this becomes a variable for this so two text boxes are defined now i'll just show you this coding uh see here this is the form uh, here we have started the html here we have started html head then this is javascript we will come to the javascript later now we will go to the form element here we have in the body of this what we have written is a form name equal to f1 we have given a name for that within the form the elements are pasted like enter the value for a uh, then we create a text box and we have created an uh, for id we have given the name a and the variable name is a same way for b also then button a button is created and it is of type uh, that is it's a button type and uh, we have given the caption as submit on clicking that button then this function should be executed on click then we ask this function to be Exactly. This is a JavaScript function. Now, this is nothing but heading, and uh, within heading, after this, we have given the uh, div element uh, where we have given the ID. So this we are going to catch it here in this JavaScript. We have given the name as C. 
now we will see this function load of here we assign two variables a and b parse it then whatever the data entered by the html we are catching it here by how you can catch it by using the document dot f1 that is dom object document dot f1 f1 is nothing but this form one and then within that what is the variable name a and value so whatever is in that value text box is entered we catch it and since it is an integer we use it because when it is entered in the text box it will be considered as a string but we, we after getting the string we convert it into integer by using the parsint and then we store it in a same way for b also then we add this url uh, after getting this data it has to go to the php where we add that and then again send it back because our concept is this is the client side this program is executing in the client side and php is at the server side so this data will be sent to the php side that is server script isn't it php is a server script so here we have given the name add numbers.php add to numbers.php so in that the coding is there where those two values are entered add so here uh, question mark in the url what we do is add to numbers.php question mark after that we send the variables what are the variables so a equal to then concatenation symbol this a is then plus uh, then again within quotes ampersand so we are concatenating the b value equal to plus b so like this we send the data then uh, we declare a variable called u where we are going to create the object see as i said the previous one you can give the full name as xml http request object instead i have given here the name u that is why i say it is a user defined variable but here the right hand side we create the object okay so first we check whether it is for the ie or other browser if it is for other browser then we create using new xml else we use we create it using activex that is this is mainly for a ie that is explorer internet explorer so like this we create that then uh, xml http request object is created then now we are going to use the methods within that just now we have seen uh, what are all the methods we are going to use so one of the method is on ready state change we check that for that in that we call this callback function where you have to write it like this function with empty parameter this is a callback function so if uh, within that you are writing it u dot ready state we check whether ready state equal to 4 ready state equal to 4 means success okay everything is okay and u dot status is 200 is also it we have received everything in a correct way i'll show you that again see we are using this uh, this method on ready state chain and if ready state is 4 done the operation is completed fully that is what we are checking and if it is 200 status code is 200 everything is completely okay okay now so we will check in this if class and then uh once it is over uh definitely uh, it, it must have gone to the php and then the data must be received that is what here we are checking okay so in that case we have to display the output because what is our uh, thing we are adding two numbers a and b so it will be sent the a value and b value are sent to the php script and the data is result is coming so that we are going to display it on this user browser side so how you can display where you can display that's where we have entered div id equal to c so this we have to catch it here so how you can access it by using the dom that is document or get element by id that is why we have given here id so using id you can uh, get that div element so get element by id you have to spell exactly the same way okay so this is a method available in the document object so model so c so that is what here i have given then dot inner html with in that we are want it to be displayed what we have to display equal to u dot response text so that is what we have seen show you response text 
what it is returning from the php so that is we are displaying it here u dot response text it is nothing but the added value then uh, here uh, this we are checking and displaying here we are doing the opening uh, that is opening of this uh, xml http request object so how we pass the arguments open get uh, that is we are using get method we say it is using get method and then url uh, so url just know we have made this url so that we pass it as a string and then true okay uh, boolean whether it is true we are sending then u dot send once it is open and then we send the data will be uh, once you execute this send statement then the data will be this uh, this will be sent and then the result will be received where it is displayed here now we'll see how it gets executed i'm going to execute this program local host php prs already i have started ajax is a folder and the name of the program is ajax eg1 dot html i am executing the html now so now this is what this is the program see here ajax dot eg1 dot html so when i execute this html executes and the data is received and on click of the submit button it will be sent to this php now i'll show you that how it sends see here now i am giving the value 7 and then some some code okay it is adding now when i press submit see here this is a place where i have placed the div element see here this div element there after this addition of two numbers div element is placed there only we are getting the answer now there is no reloading you haven't seen any clicking if you observe that it means it is it has to be loaded there is no reloading only these two data when i press the submit the data has come see here again i change this data there will be no reloading only this portion gets changed so this is how an ajax works if i, if I haven't used then uh, the whole thing seems to be a uh, refreshing and you can see it gets executed again the data is loaded from the service side whole uh, data whole page is refreshed but here it is not refreshed only this portion is gets changed all these things are remaining so no data is sent there only if there is any change in this uh, that will be sent to that and then here it changed the text box all these informations are there with they are not preloaded again and again We'll see the example in the 